Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. It is an honor and pleasure to welcome um, someone who has been under a lot of pressure for the last couple of years, leading the State Department of Health. She is the Commissioner of the Department of Health, Judy Persichelli. Uh, Commissioner, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Now, this program will be seen a little bit after we're taping on the 7th of February. Please put in context what is going to happen on March, March 7th, I believe, a month from today, even though this may even be seen after. There's a lifting of the mask mandate for children in schools, but there's a but to that, is there not? Well, yes, with this virus, um, I think we've noticed that there's been a lot of butts uh, because of the surges that we've seen up and down, up and down. So right now with all of the, um, all of the metrics going in the right direction, positivity going down, cases, in the, uh, cases generally going down, hospitalizations going down, if that trend continues, I think it's time for people to start operationalizing this virus into their daily lives and having a little bit more freedom about making some decisions for themselves and for their children and taking some accountability for taking care of their own health as we do every year when there's a high flu season, as we do every year in making sure our children get their immunizations at the right time. So I think we're looking at history, what happened in 1918, and learning that you know, the Spanish flu never really went away. There were surges after the first two years and even the, the first three years, and people were able to handle the surges because they had learned about the virus. Commissioner, I want to follow up on something. Um, obviously, everyone's fingers are crossed. We're hoping we move, continue to move in the right direction, but we don't know. But the one thing we do know is that even though the governor recently said, Governor Murphy said 90% of all New Jerseyans have at least one vaccine, the issue of vaccine resistance, not a new issue. You've talked about it consistently. We're about to show a public service announcement that you aired on a very personal note because you are a nurse. You got your vaccine at a hospital where you're trained to be a nurse. But before we show that PSA, let everyone know why that issue continues to be, even if we move closer to normal, why that continues to be such a big issue. When we look at New Jersey and the number of people that have been vaccinated, uh, the issue is, is not as significant, except that when you do have unvaccinated individuals, it gives the virus the opportunity to invade a host, mutate, and then carry that forward to the vaccinated people. Vaccines are not 100%, we know that, they never have been. And vaccines also need boosters. And what we're finding with the Omicron, well, not just Omicron, what we're finding with COVID is that on a regular basis, we will need boosters to keep our immunity at a level that doesn't allow the virus to come into our bodies and proliferate. Unvaccinated people just give a portal of entry uh, to the virus uh, to do more damage to other people. So that the resistance, although we have almost 90% of individuals in New Jersey having at least one dose and a little over 50% are now boosted and we have to get that number up, the unvaccinated not only put themselves at risk, it puts everyone at risk for the variants that we've struggled with. You just listened to the commissioner talking about the importance of vaccine. Let's take a look at a public service announcement that I believe is actually put out by the State Department of Health, the commissioner talking about vaccines. I'm Judy Persichelli, New Jersey's health commissioner. Well, I got vaccinated here at St. Francis Medical Center where I attended nursing school. We are all in this together. Stay safe, mask up, and let's get vaccinated. Commissioner, there's a public service announcement where you're making a direct plea to people. But there are so many parents out there watching right now, those who watch NJ Spotlight News every night, Metro Focus, our partners at WNET, watching the news every night, and their parents of really young children. Put into context for us the issue of really young children under five and vaccines. Well, we obviously expect uh, all the vaccines uh, to, for everyone to be what we call up to date with vaccines. So we do expect that for uh, those individuals six months to four years of age uh, should be getting the vaccines that uh, will be approved uh, for uh, that age group. But we also understand, and we have to be very non-judgmental 
about parents' reluctantness to get children vaccinated. Uh, I come from the perspective that every parent wants to do the best for their children. So we need to inform, educate, support, and provide enough access to the vaccine through our pediatricians, who are the most trustful individuals to give vaccine to kids, through our federally qualified health centers, through centers where parents particularly will feel comfortable bringing their children. Commissioner, talk to folks directly. So many, unfortunately, too many of my friends and some family members who talk about their personal freedom and it is their personal right as an American, they believe many, too many, as I said, to not only not take the vaccine, but not wear a mask. It's my right. Please put into context, and you're not a constitutional expert, but you are the head of the Department of Health. You're a clinical professional. You understand these issues. Those rights come with limitations, do they not, when it involves other people? Please help us understand, Commissioner. Well, certainly the rights come with limitations when you're putting other people at risk. Uh, and yes, you do have the freedom to make decisions about your own self if it is just affecting your own self. But if you are affecting and putting other people at risk, I think it is an issue of respect. When people say to me, why did you get vaccinated? I get vaccinated because I want to protect myself and my family, but I also get vaccinated because I respect you. And I don't want to put you at risk if you are in my company. It's an issue of respect. Final question, Commissioner. March 7th is a significant day, particularly with our school-aged children. Again, local schools, I believe, will have the right to make their own decision if they want their children to keep masks on. Is that correct? I think there'll be a couple of levels of decisions. First is certainly the parents. You, It will be up to the parents if they want to continue to mask their children. And many parents have told me over time they will continue masking uh, their kids. And then the school districts do have the right to determine, based on their own specific and individual and unique circumstances, whether they want to keep the masks on or not. Generally, there will not be a state uh, mandate. And that is balancing, again, children's freedom to learn without you know, having a mask on, to be able to see the expressions of a teacher and the expressions of the kids in their class, which you know, supports all of us when we have interactions. So um, we're keeping our fingers crossed that everything goes in the right direction and that we learn to operationalize and live with COVID in a safe way going forward. Commissioner Judy Persichelli, the head of the State Department of Health, uh, two years as we do this program, uh, be a little bit more, a little beyond that when this is seen uh, in repeats. But I'm going to say this, Commissioner, accurate, relevant, credible public information from our public officials and government sources, particularly around public health, is more important than ever. And Commissioner, we thank you for uh, being a huge part of that discussion. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you so much. I'm Steve Adubato. That's the Commissioner. We'll be right back. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Johnson & Johnson, The Fidelco Group, TD Bank, New Jersey Sharing Network, The Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, The Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, The Northward Center, and by the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Promotional support provided by bestofnj.com and by CIANJ and Commerce Magazine. The North Ward Center was founded on the vision that community is connected to neighborhood stabilization and neighborhoods need a place for kids to play. That's why we're building a recreational complex in the heart of Newark. Unfortunately, inner city youth development programs are dwindling. We want to expand on our promise and build a place where kids are welcomed and doors remain open. The North Ward Center, building a better community, 48 years and counting.